Good morning and welcome to this brief reflection as we journey through Lent together. Our text today is from the prophecy given through Joel and uh, it's a call to return to the Lord. First of all, God speaks and then Joel comments. So we're in Joel chapter 2, um, verse 12 and then 13. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. And then Joel comments, Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Well, they're two, <clears throat> two familiar verses, and in them we see the essential nature of God himself. We're reading the words of Joel, a prophet who lived some 500 years before Christ. And when we read the prophets, we're quite entitled to conclude that overall, they rather focus on God's judgment, on his intolerance of sin and his readiness to punish those who reject him. It is the predominant theme of biblical prophecy. But when we find verses like today's, and there are plenty of others like them, we realise that underlying the sadness and even the anger that God has towards those that turn away from him, his love for his creation, and for humankind in particular, and his willingness to forgive and restore us, are the qualities that sum up God's nature above all others. Love and mercy, compassion and forgiveness, they are his essential nature. But if we see God's character in these verses, we also have the human character stripped bare in front of us. The Lord says, return to me. And time and time again, he says it, return to me. Why and why so often? Because it's in our human nature to turn away from God, to go our own way. Self-will is our key characteristic. Otherwise, God would have no need to keep calling us back to him. If you've ever been in a sailing dinghy, you will know that you have to adjust the tiller almost all the time because the wind and the waves are constantly taking you slightly off course. And if you were to release the tiller, you would very quickly find yourself drifting at the mercy of the elements. So God says to us, return to me. We may not feel we're going 180 degrees in the opposite direction, but once we start to veer off course, even little by little, it's much further for us to go if we are to turn our eyes towards him again. So we need God's Holy Spirit to keep us on track. But as well as acknowledging that self-will is part of our very being, God also points out that we are remarkably good at pretending that we're better than we are, perhaps to ourselves as well as to others. Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments, declares the Lord. Don't pretend to be something you are not, says God. Tear your hearts, not your garments. In other words, let your repentance, your turning back to God, be sincere and in your heart and mind, not false and just a, an exterior show for the benefit of others. There's a challenge there for us all, I guess. For me to be more honest with myself before God and not to pretend to others to be something better than I am. The second verse I read is Joel's comments on God's words. So he says, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Here is the heart of God. He's full of grace and mercy. He doesn't fly off the handle. His love is steadfast. It's reliable. It's eternal. And it's, he is full of it. And it's in that steadfast love that we see the initiative that God takes in issuing the invitation for us, time and time again as necessary, to return to him and keep in step with him. 
God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Let's close with a prayer. Our loving Father, we thank you for that steadfast love that is there whatever, that is constant and eternal, that abounds for us. Lord, help us to respond to that love, to take some of it on board into ourselves and to seek to be more like you as we interact with other people so that all we say, all we do, all we are is a reflection of you. Keep us close to you, we pray, O Lord. Amen. Now for our song this morning, you will find a link to an extended version of the old favourite chorus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. <laughs>